our society is changing, putting new pressures on schools. Today, kids don't need their teachers to get information about any topic they want. They can easily go to Khan Academy, search the web, and even find and contact experts on basically anything they want to learn, usually in a much better way than the teacher can provide. This is why we see growing trends like homeschooling across the world, online universities and courses, learning from web communities, and so on. If schools want to remain relevant in the future, they need to adapt, taking advantage of the many new opportunities for learning that are out there. Kids are smart, and if they sense they can learn better outside the classroom, they will. And they are. One of the problems of school reform that is well documented is when a large scale solution are imposed upon local context. This was clearly evident with the excitement starting in the 1970s with the efforts to bring computers to school. High level decision makers decided to invest heavily in computers, but schools did not have the proper structure to deal with these changes in meaningful ways. Technology was oversold, but underused. The key to successful reform is working in local context and taking into consideration the ways teacher teach and student learn. What is the nature of the content being taught? Which technologies can support learning? And of course, how the learning spaces are designed. In our Future Learning Space project in Haifa, we don't take a space-centric view. Rather, we think about the delicate interactions of space with pedagogy, technology, content areas, people, and culture. One of the important lessons that we are learning from setting examples of future learning spaces around the world is that uh, design of any space must take into account a broad range of interested parties and expertise. Some obvious ones are the architects, but oftentimes neglected are the educational researchers, us <laughs> and the teachers, and of course, the students. Um, it's important to understand the different needs and requirements of the different stakeholders and to work with multiple expertise, especially when redesigning a space which has many physical limitations. In our case, for example, the space that we had had low ceilings and limited storage room and some walls that couldn't be torn down because they served as pillars for the whole uh, building. Uh, but it turned out to be an advantage because these are exactly the type of challenges that schools will need to confront. And our vision is that even with relatively low tech, almost any school classroom can be transformed to serve as a future learning space. One of the important things that we did up front was to reach to international experts to see some of the exciting work that has already been developed. For example, at Penn State University, our colleagues found low-tech solutions that allowed different types of collaborative grouping. Other colleagues uh, in Canada took a regular classroom, but by projecting a rainforest simulation on the walls, they literally, literally changed the classroom into a rainforest environment that the students could explore and conduct inquiry the same way that researchers do. For example, by collecting samples and aggregating them in a cladogram. The Lynx Future Learning Space is currently under construction on the first floor of the University of Haifa Faculty of Education building. This location was chosen so that we can use it as a hotbed for research and so that we can bring in some of the most talented and innovative educational practitioners around Israel to learn and bring these ideas to their schools. Our design process led us to articulate several key design features. First, the space's modularity allowing students to engage in various forms of learning, depending upon the learning needs at the very moment. This includes whole group discussions, breakout groups, and learning niches that literally come out of the walls, and even community-level seminars so that experts can bring in their knowledge. 
Another design feature has to do with building an any-to-any -any communication system that extends within and outside the physical walls of the classroom. Now, individuals and groups can use any device to almost instantaneously connect to other individuals and groups, allowing for the type of uninterrupted, opportunistic collaboration that allows students to advance their ideas and understanding of complex topics. As part of our agenda to impact schools in Israel, so they are prepared for teaching and learning in the innovation age. We have partnered with World Art Kadima Mada. Along with our staff, Ministry of Education administrators, and practicing classroom teachers, our Haifa Future Learning Space serves as the flagship to guide the changes taking place in Israel. Kadima Mada is currently leading the initiative to redesign 200 classrooms in northern Israel and the Negev region in the south. We are working closely with all the relevant stakeholders, not only guiding them on how to use the new spaces effectively, but by developing instructional material, working closely with teachers in the field, and thinking about how to scale up successful implementation to more and more schools. One of the large challenges of education today is getting students engaged in projects that are relevant to their lives while learning about materials and matters. The purpose of citizen science in school is not necessarily to create future scientists, but rather to cultivate an informed citizenry that can make educated decisions that are based on scientific knowledge within the complex world where they live. For example, should parents send their kids to be immunized against, against polio? When should we be careful about jellyfish swarms infesting our shores and how do they affect our local ecologies? As kids today get information from various social media like Facebook or Pinterest, School citizen science projects aim to give students the tools to be critical data consumers. Using crowdsourcing technologies, students can be involved with citizens and scientists to collect and analyze data they engaged in real-world problems that contribute to their families and communities' well-being. We often think of learning as being primarily related to classroom education for regular children. Yet many children and adults with disabilities spend a considerable time in special education programs and healthcare facilities learning how to cope with the ramifications of their physical, cognitive and social limitations. Novel technologies combined with unique educational paradigms can facilitate this process. For example, children on the autism spectrum are known to enjoy computer activities, yet parents and educators are concerned that they do so at the expense of time spent socializing with their peers. We have designed a multi-user touch table system to encourage collaborative interactions by pairs of these children, such that a range of computer-based learning activities are best accomplished when they do them together. As illustrated in this video clip, the two children are enjoying their chance to learn together as they improve their social skills. When such technologies are integrated into an FLS, learners with special needs attain equality within a mainstream learning community.